Was it the water that penetrated the earth? And the wind that tormented and modelled the rock? Was it the ice that imprisoned the stone? And the sun that dried it with the sea's breath? Did vital and natural energy etch and create in this manner this valley of the cast of Trieste? Perhaps. But there is another story. Born in a timeless time, with the once upon a time of fairy tales. There was, at the time, a pale and delicate princess called Rosandra on account of her beautiful complexion. A wicked wizard abducted her, imprisoning her in his grim castle. But as always happens, a night passed by. Listen to the princess's sad story. Challenge the wizard and defeated him. The spell was broken and Rosandra was freed. There was a great celebration and the knight immediately swore eternal love to the maiden. But the sea, the ship, and the crusade were waiting for him, and he went off once again, vowing and hoping to come back. During the voyage, a sudden storm, the shipwreck, and the young knight disappeared beneath the waves. The news reached the castle. Not a word said the fair princess, but she could not stop crying. She knew not night or day, so much so that the icy wind from the north was so moved to pity that he blew and blew until he turned her into stone. But Rosandra's grief was so strong that the very rock cracked, freeing the tears that spilt out among the stones. just the trickle that soon became strong and started rushing down towards the sea, becoming a torrent, gouging out deep crevices, creating waterfalls between grey walls of rocks. And the wind continued to blow carrying seeds and roots from faraway places and ask the sun to warm up the earth and the rain to fall. And immediately among the rocks, unknown flowers and plants bloomed and blossomed, the same ones the knight had seen in his travels in faraway lands. Immediately in the waters there appeared all kinds of fish, shellfish and toads. and snakes glided among the stones and other animals hid in the woods.
the birds flew high in the sky. And wise owls waited for the night to fall. Black bats lived in the spaces in the caves. Today, experts and geologists tell us about the valley, speaking about faults and erosion. Of karstic phenomena and deep sinkholes. Of screes and stones, of rocky terraces and signs of ancient floods. Botanists and biologists speak of an environment with a great biodiversity that has typical mountain characteristics despite the modest altitude of the bottom of the valley, with species that normally live in places that are very far away from here, from the Balkan plateaus to the Alpine valleys, from the Mediterranean coast to the Black Sea. But other words are also whispered by the rocks and the water. or the northeasterly wind that guards Rosandra's grief to the end of time. Pojdi čez kras na tiho gmajno, med molčeče bore in poslušaj. Skala ti pove svojo povest, povest o življenju. Kaj za to, če je bilo to življenje britko in samotno? Bilo je. In the Caput Adria, the last boundary of the Adriatic, a sea that the ancient inhabitants considered difficult because of the strong northern wind, from the second millennium BC, there were the first contacts with that pre-classical world of the Aegean Sea that used to come here to buy amber, covering ancient routes between east and west. In the course of time, on the Karst Highlands, crossed by a tangle of very old routes, a network of fortified villages began to develop, the hill forts. The way of life changed, and slowly the prehistoric shelters in caves were abandoned, often becoming sacred places, for other, different constructions. Ancient traces that the valley preserves. In this strip of land that marks the natural geographical limit of the karst, between the Rosandra River and the Ospo stream, with a safe landing place in Stramare di Muggia, perhaps another inhabited area, not yet discovered, rose up as a marketplace or a meeting place, maybe the nucleus of pre-Roman Trieste, that has always been searched for on the hill of San Giusto. A theory born from the study of the contents of the burial ground of San Servolo, which has yielded finds that go from the end of the 6th century BC to the 1st century AD with different manufactured products, from the inhabitants of Veneto to the Celts, and as far as those of the indigenous populations who knew the customs and rites of Roman funerals. Romans, who having defeated the Istri in 177 BC, constructed this aqueduct that conveyed the waters of the Rosandra from the sources of Crogole and Dolina as far as the new colony of Trieste. A course that archaeologists think was between 12 and 16 kilometers long, with a channel that permitted a daily flow of 5,800 cubic meters of water. In the Middle Ages, once the fury of the barbarians was over, the castles of Vihunberg, San Servolo and Mocco presided over the valley and controlled an important commercial road, collecting taxes on the goods, salt 
oil and wheat used to pass through here on an ancient road that has now disappeared. In time, near the stone houses, along the banks of the river and its tributaries, 36 mills were built, and many were the women who dedicated themselves to making bread or washing clothes that came from the towns. New jobs to supplement the family's income. Families were then grouped in communities that jealously preserved the use of collective lands. The comunella, the zreña, an early ancestral form of self-government of the territory that has managed to protect a large amount of the natural heritage of this valley. Basta un colle, una vetta, una costa, che fosse un luogo solitario e che i tuoi occhi risalendo si fermassero in cielo. L'incredibile spicco delle cose nell'aria oggi ancora tocca il cuore. Io, per me, credo che un albero, un sasso profilati sul cielo, fossero dei, fin dall'inizio. In all the ancient Indo-European languages, the word sacred means separate in order to indicate since the most distant times that mysterious forces and powers which man could not control lived in spaces that were different from those in which daily life unfolded. Sacred was the wood in which the trees created an opening between different dimensions through the roots sinking into the earth and the branches touching the sky. Keepers of very ancient goddesses, of the mother goddess, source of life and death, that drew their energy from the sun, the moon, the earth and the water. With the climate change in the prehistoric cast and in the Rosandra Valley, the landscape of oak woods and forests changed in the epoch of hill forts, deforestation began, which the Romans continued, wood for the new colonists was needed, loosening the bonds imposed by religion on the sacred woods that became shelter for dark forces. In order to survive, the primitive goddesses hid themselves in the fairy tales and legends, becoming fairies or magical animals that brought luck and wealth, or becoming witches, the nocturnal aspect of the goddess. Then the barbarian incursions, the fear of the people who fled and who no longer cultivated the land. The wood took back its spaces until the arrival of other people who once again fled, this time from the Turks. Mostly shepherds, who from the 15th century on turned the heath, Gemeine, from the German common, into an open pasture land that became more and more desolate. The landscape changed again and it would take the Habsburgs with Maria Theresa, who entrusted the Supreme Imperial Royal Commercial Commission for the coast with the custody of what remained of the ancient forests. This was the beginning of the early attempts at reforestation that have continued with changing fortunes up to this day. Industrialization and the abandoning of the pasture lands produced a real revolution in the landscape Bushes are substituting more and more the karstic heath and the product of thousands of years of interaction between man, animals and plants, paradoxically, say the experts, risks disappearing. A walk in Val Rosandra thus becomes an archaeological tour. 
a search for that extraordinary biodiversity that still survives here, with the slow, gentle and unconcerned rhythm of time. La foresta, da prima austriaca, poi italiana, jugoslava e infine slovena, irrideva quel mutare di nomi e di confini. Non apparteneva a nessuno. Semmai erano gli altri che le appartenevano, almeno per quel poco che si può appartenere a qualcuno o a qualcosa. I'm the last person to be born in Botazzo, in 1944. My life has been, let's say, good, but hard, because living there wasn't easy. When I was four years old, I think, in 1948, the border was drawn up between Italy and Yugoslavia, and from one day to the next, my mother forbade me to go beyond the bridge. And yes, it was horrible, because there were people who fled over the border, and bad things happened. Then I got married really young. I got married in the church of Val Rosandra. Life in Botazzo was very hard. After um, my parents died, then our neighbors died. So just my husband and I and our son were left all alone in the whole village. We ruled the lot. There wasn't a soul but us. I used to think I saw the neighbor's chimney smoking, but the only smoke was in my head. And then after five years, the people who were still here in Botazzo bought the house that belonged to San Sin. And when they arrived here, and I said good evening the first time to them, I burst into tears. Finally, I was able to say good evening to someone in the village and it had such an effect on me that even now we remember that first greeting and how finally Botazzo had begun to come to life again. So now they're living happily there, but I'm not there anymore. I've been living some ten years down in the city. I'm not at Botazzo anymore, but my heart is always there. My heart has always remained there. E non stago più a Botazzo, però il cuore è sempre su. Il cuore è sempre rimasto su. Questo carso io amo. Nell'orgoglio discreto e geloso di chi fissa nel cielo e negli occhi lo stesso sguardo asciutto, lavato come la terra e l'erba nelle doline. Ancient legends tell us that in a timeless time, the old emperor arrived in the valley, accompanied by noblemen, armed and wrapped in dark cloaks. The tired sovereign found the cave he was looking for, and he sat on the throne of white stone, and a sudden deep sleep took hold of him. The night stayed on. In the woods, Fairies and kobolds danced and looked for magic herbs and roots. And the great falcon offered wings. The deer its soft fleece and sharp teeth the woolly wild boar. The wind blew strongly, making a whirl of the wings, the fleece, the sharp teeth and the herbs of the wood that the moonlight turned into silver dust. Insubstantial, on the guardian nights it landed and subtly enveloped them. To them, another shape was given. Black bats, lords of the night, 
would always keep watch over the long sleep of their lord. Many are the legends that Val Rosandra tells. Many are those that have its karstic caves as their setting. Charles the Great, fairies, spiteful kobolds, the Vila in Slovene, Skrat, practical joker gnomes, spirits, sprites of nature, who give life to the traditions of almost all of Europe and that live where the sunlight never reaches, among landscapes of stalactites and stalagmites, in the darkness of a world created by the water. Miles of galleries that unravel in a hundred natural hollows. Almost all remains, say the experts, of complex major structures eroded by the river It was the year 1885 when, with the construction of the Trieste Erpella Railway, exploration of this subterranean world started. The Cave of Dreams, the Cave of the Galleries, the Crack of the Wind. In many of these hollows, bats, the symbol of the nature reserve, find shelter and together with the bats, microfauna, that because of its great number of species, is considered one of the richest and most interesting of the entire regional territory. A fact that reflects the hydrogeological complexity of the valley. The zoologists have divided the organisms that live in the underground waters into different groups. Stygobite, stygophiles, stygocene, Names that have a common root that come from far away, from ancient mythology, from the Styx River that in the underworld was the set passage towards the world of shadows. And it is from even more remote periods, this time scientifically covered, that the origins of bats derive, whose fossil remains have been dated to 50 million years ago. The characteristics of these ill-treated mammals are really unique. The only ones that can fly, and with a very sophisticated ultrasonic radar system, they can see in total darkness. Leaving their reputation as satanic creatures to the world of medieval fables, these animals, among the most specialized vertebrates of the entire fauna, capable of going into hibernation and of surviving without food for the whole winter, carry out during the summer an untiring job of biological control of the insect population. So much so that many scientists have defined them night swallows. Montagne, quella montagna. Nubi ora le fioriscono dal grembo e dal costato. Più in alto le offuscano il profilo. Nuvole dentro nuvole si stivano, travasano l'una nell'altra la loro oscurità. Si strappano, vanno alcune verso più luminosi varchi, alcune a un nero muro. Ed eccolo. Desidera levarsi lui, falco, al mirabile sfracelo, entrare in quel miscuglio d'aria e di luci. The first thing a child asks when he enters Val Rosandra is to climb on the rocks. A spontaneous gesture, as well as an attraction to those walls which he cannot resist. For some people, climbing is a lifelong passion.
Perhaps it is because here the rock faces slide into the sea. Perhaps it is because here when the borer blows, it looks as if you can reach out and touch the Alps. Perhaps it is because Fernand Braudel, a French historian, was right in saying that the Mediterranean Sea is a sea of mountain dwellers. Perhaps it is because of these, and for other reasons, that in the Rosandra Valley at the end of the 1920s, the first rock climbing school in Italy came into being. The founder was Emilio Comici. After having seen Comici, the writer Dino Buzzati would say of him, ascend with the lightness of a graceful insect above the overhanging rock faces. All climbers, even the very good ones, seemed in comparison ungainly and heavy apes. This amazing skill generated his great feats, not so much out of audacity, but rather for the rigorous beauty of the concept. A perfect vertical line from the bottom to the top, corresponds in mountaineering to aesthetical perfection. Komichi, the man of the sixth grade and of the pendulums on the walls of the Dolomites, made Val Rosandra the training ground where generations of climbers would develop. This is still the case even today. Tu non crederesti mai che di notte gli alberi camminano o diventano sogni. Pensa che in un albero c'è un violino d'amore. Pensa che un albero canta e ride. Pensa che un albero sta in un crepaccio e poi diventa vita. An ancient tradition, the Mayense, that every year is renewed. An ancient rite of passage that has remained in the peasant culture of the caste and has its origins in the archaic cults linked to spring, the season of rebirth. The young people meet around the May tree, the Mai, a trunk of pine on which a cherry tree has been grafted. In the forest that the Celts dedicated to the sun god Belenus, the tree represented the spirit of the vegetation and its promises of plenty. Yesinski da Shumi Narachlo Polistio tamnem seras gublia, in u vetru veica se sklania nad veico, koda poljublja. In sivi pomrak vzdehti, na grozdu kaplice bleščijo, a kaplice še preko streha rjavih slamnatih pouzijo. V zelenju tamnem višnji osad se češpljev temo skriva, Tema prihaja od gora, srce posluša in počiva. Thank you. 